So we're just sitting and having a drink after my epic day, which was going to Langtau, which is the main town, but a two hour ride from here. Oh, when you see the pictures of this ride here. We are Pierre, Lisa, and our furry crew member Tiller. We are sailing around the world in our Outremer 5X catamaran, and we just sailed from Bora Bora to Vanuatu to rejoin the Outremer Gliwo Rally after spending a full year in French Polynesia. Please subscribe to join our adventures, and a big thank you to everyone who's already subscribed. In our last episode, we sailed from Bora Bora to Tonga, and then last week we had a very fast sail from Tonga to Vanuatu, where we are now. As we approached the island of Tana, we could see the active volcano, Mount Yasur, which is close to Port Resolution, where the rally boats would be arriving. We arrived several days in advance of the other rally boats, so we had arranged to do our own immigration and customs at Port Resolution. Normally, the immigration is done in Lenacal. We could see the recent devastation from the two cyclones and earthquake that hit last month, and the yacht club was in pretty bad shape. So we used the hood of the truck to complete the additional paperwork for customs and biosecurity, but immigration was not there. We went to the local restaurant in Port Resolution, the only restaurant run by Leia, and that was a lucky encounter because I was to meet her the next day on the truck into town. This is Leia, and this is her restaurant, and she's going to be cooking us a nice chicken curry, a El Pas Francais. Uh, à Vanuatu, tout le monde parle les deux langues, ou soit anglais, soit français. Soit anglais, soit français. I would learn more about that when I spent the day with Leia when I went into town. But while we were waiting for her to prepare our dinner, we went on a little tour of the village. That's the pen for the big pigs. Oh, look at the little tiny piglet. It's the runt, and so it can't get there because it doesn't get enough food. Piles of debris from the storm. Fallen trees. Again. They're called atavoa. And it's like a nut. Yeah, something. Let's see. Oh, interesting. And they're on the ground. Yes. Does it come from this tree? Yes. This is the communal water. And there are separate huts that are communal areas and communal area for cooking and a women's center. So the small little huts are really just the private places where people sleep. We had a fabulous meal of chicken curry and lobster and some root vegetables that were yuca, cassava and taro, some rice and some green veggie, a bit like spinach. Being welcomed in the village was such a nice experience. Next day was a Friday, market day, and many people wanted to go to town. There was no place on the truck for Leia, so I invited her to come in the cab and sit beside me. All right, so we're on our way to Lenkal. And we can see us there. And I'm with Leia, who made us a nice dinner. And we have John driving. And I don't know how many people are in the back. I was going to town with Tim, our crew who was leaving to return to Brazil. We needed to get all of the passport stamps since immigration had not come to port resolution and he needed to be close to the airport for his flight. Pierre had stayed on the boat with Tiller and I got back after dark because it turned out to be a whole day trip. And when I got back, I told him about my day and I'll show you that conversation along with some of the photos from this epic trip. Okay. So we're just sitting and having a drink after my epic day. Tim, who is our crew, was leaving and had to go to the airport, so I was accompanying him to make sure everything went right because we had to get our passports stamped at immigration because we hadn't been stamped in the country yet. When everyone got on the truck, and I was luckily in the cabin, and I got in the cabin and I was lucky to have Leia, 
who's the restaurant owner last night sit beside me so I was in the cabin on a padded seat and coming back honestly I thought the truck was going to tip over at several places because the road well there was a cyclone a cyclone which there's a lot of water that's kind of washed out the road and they've kind of tamped it down but we go all around the volcano and the views are fabulous I don't need to go up to the top of the crater I have seen the volcano And there's people walking across that ash and when the wind blows you see the ash blowing I mean how bad can that be for your lungs but um, but uh, you know these ruts I mean some of them are steep and there's one part where we had to go across a river Yeah, Leah said sometimes if it's been raining, they, they can't get the trip into town because the river's too deep. And uh, then the kids in the back were like laughing the whole way, like because it's so rough and bouncy. Beautiful, eerie landscape. And so we had this long, long, long ride into town and Leah explaining things to me all along the way, which was really fabulous. Um, so I learned so much about the culture. So everyone here speaks three or four languages. Okay, tell her to settle down. I know you're glad to see me because I was gone all day. Yeah, so everyone here speaks three or four languages. Bisawa is the main Vanuatu language that everybody speaks. All kids either go to French or English primary school, and it's about half and half until about grade six. And then when they go to secondary school, they're gonna learn English, which is the main language. The reason we only see small kids on the beach is because the older kids have all been shipped off to school in the towns. On our drive, we passed the Treehouse Village. When we got to town, I didn't take many pictures. It's not really a very pretty town, except for the ocean side is very nice. And so on the way back, there were just as many people, and there was a lady who really wanted to get on, but she had a tiny little baby, a two-month-old baby, so she hands the baby into me in the window and I held the baby on the way back. Back at the boat, the winds had switched to the west, and there was ash from the volcano falling all over the boat. Well, there was a west wind yesterday when I was away and the ash on the volcano is bad. It'll be west today and when it turns southeast, we'll wash the boat and this will all go away. Some of the ash was like needles and shards of glass, so we wore masks when we cleaned up the deck with fresh water from our water tanks. Going to the beach with Tiller was always fun for both Tiller and the children. They'd never seen a dog that was trained before. Sit, 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 sit. I told her to sit. Be good. A dog okay. that could sit, lie down, Here's and come on a whistle. The problem was they all started to whistle and Tiller was confused because they were whistling from all directions. When it was time to leave, everyone helped me push the dinghy off the beach. Okay, you gonna help me? Can you help me get my boat out? Oh, you're so strong! <laughs> push, push! Then the Gliwo rally boats began to arrive and the official program of helping people in the village recover from the cyclones began. That big tree fell down during the hurricane. Back in the village, Pierre helped to prepare the solar energy systems that were damaged during the cyclones. He was able to get the solar system in the women's center going, which powers the freezer that they have in the village. Wendy is a school teacher and also in charge of solar and we visited her home to see her system. That's the one. That's going to the... Uh, the one going to the battery and the connect here. Yes, so I need to, to know the wires coming here, connecting here. That's coming from the solar panel. Oh, you guys got to learn how to fix this electricity. You need to go to university for that. <laughs> okay, how old are you? What's your name and how old are you? Huh? And how old are you? Five years old? Five. Oh.
How come you're not in school? They are kindy in the afternoon. We have kindy morning for age two and three, five, four and five in the afternoon. Ah, so it's so playtime right now. Yeah. Here's one of the other school teachers outside the schoolhouse. The kids are always cleanly dressed, even though this is how laundry is done. I have to record the arrival of our oh, friends that we have not seen for a whole year. Bonjour! Oh, <laughs> the first rally cocktail was held in the partly repaired yacht club. I did not take the volcano tour, but Pierre did. Stay to the end to find out why I didn't take the tour. Pierre held the camera high over his head to get these photos. Some people walked even closer to the rim. Here I am telling Pierre what Leia said about the volcano tour and the risks. And she was a guide working for the yacht club on the day that the two people got killed. So you know when I did my research I found out that there have been people who have died. There were two people who died and the, and the story is that it was a, a Japanese woman and her guide that both got killed when the volcano spewed some rocks and hit them in the head. But she said there have been other people injured, so that article that I read that calculated risks didn't quite get them right, because there have been other people injured by flying rocks. And she said there was one case that was particularly bad, a, a woman from New Zealand who I guess had burning rocks hit her feet and she had to be airlifted back to New Zealand. So, so going to the rim of the volcano is, is not without some risk negligible because it's not like people are being hurt or maimed every year but volcanoes are unpredictable and it is on alert number two right now which i've read and i'm posting a blog on my website about why i'm not climbing the volcano and i've seen it already i think i've seen it the best way driving all the way around it driving from the mountain coming down and seeing this beautiful view of the volcano and you know unfortunately coming back the shots were fabulous because we, we were into the sun but, you know, the, the windshield is dirty with ash. I couldn't really get pictures and I'm sitting in the middle seat. So I, the pictures are stamped in my brain, but I don't have the, all those pictures to share with the YouTube viewer. So a visit to the volcano is truly spectacular. And if I thought it was truly dangerous, I would have asked Pierre not to go. But I did ask him to wear a mask, which he did. And after seeing volcanic ash, I think that's really the minimum for safety that people need to do is to protect their lungs. For those of you who want to know why I decided not to visit an active volcano, please read the blog on my website. And while you're on the website, check out the homepage with the links to Alliance to Cure. And thank you to everyone who's contributed to help fund research to find a cure for CCM.